What's up guys, Noah from Stage 3 Motorsports and today I'm going to be bringing you an install video on this BDS 2 inch leveling kit for the 2019 Ranger. Now this kit, when you open it up, you should have a couple different pieces and you'll have basically two of these top mount spacers for your front struts, some hardware and you should have six nuts to go with those top mount spacers, then a lower spring seat spacer and some rear shocks for the back and you should have two of those as well. So once you run through, double check that you've got everything, then we're gonna go ahead, put the truck up on the lift. You can put it on jack stands as well and do this in your driveway if you need and pull that wheel off and we'll just get straight into it. So once you've got your vehicle up in the air and you've got the wheel off of it, we're gonna start by removing these two brackets on either side of the knuckle. This one will use a 10 millimeter for the brake line and then we're gonna use an eight millimeter for this little sensor line. Now that we've got the brackets removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the tie rod end down here, and that's gonna be a 15 millimeter bolt on the end of that. There we go. And since this is an aluminum knuckle, these tend to pull out pretty easy, but if yours is bound up, you'll just need to give it a hit or two with the hammer there and then tap it through, and you should be good to clear that out of the way. Now with the tie rod end moved out of the way, we actually do want to clear a little bit more space with this line. And what you're going to want to do is take some sort of pry tool, come up here and get these little plastic clips out of that upper control arm. There we go. With those clear, we can kind of snake this around the outside of the tie rod end just to keep it out of the way for now, make sure it doesn't get tangled up in anything. Now for the sway bar, we're gonna come down here to this first bushing and remove the two 18 millimeter bolts on either end to loosen this up. So with the sway bar loosened up down here by the bushing, we'll come back up to the top of the knuckle where it meets the upper control arm and we're gonna wanna remove this bolt. And once you pull it off, the upper control arm should pop out the top. But once again, if it is a little bound up, you may have to hit it with a hammer a few times on the end of the knuckle just to loosen everything up so it'll break free. So once we've got the upper control arm separated from the knuckle, we'll rest to the side like you just saw me do. And now we have full access to our strut. So we're gonna need to remove these two 18 millimeter nuts on the bottom first. <laughs> True. Now with the two lower nuts removed, we're gonna remove the three nuts on the top of the strut.
So now that we've got all three of the 15 millimeter nuts removed from the top mount and we've got the two 18s off the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and put a little pressure on this and you can see it moves the whole strut down. So if we give this pressure and pull it back, we can start to work the strut out towards us. And we'll just lift up from the bottom and there we go. So with our strut out of the vehicle, this is where it gets a little bit tricky with the BDS kit. So you'll see in that kit, like we mentioned earlier, you're gonna have a top mount spacer that's gonna go here, but you also have a spring seat spacer that needs to go on the bottom. And the only way you're gonna get that lower one on is by using a spring compressor to compress this down, take the top hat off and basically strip the strut down and then slide the new seat onto it. Now, we're not gonna show you the entire process of that, but ideally what you'll probably wanna do is take this to a shop and have them pop that seat on there for you and reattach all of this. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back with the complete strut and put it back in. All right, guys, so we got our strut taken apart, put it back together, and we put that little spacer down here in the bottom for the spring seat. And then obviously I have the new top mount spacer sitting on here as well. And it basically can only line up one way, so you don't have to worry about angling it or putting it on wrong. Now that we've done that, we're gonna just go ahead and slot this into place. So I've started by just loosely attaching the new nuts to the top mount here to get this sort of hanging downward. And then that's gonna give us the ability to push on this lower control arm and we can seat the studs through the bottom and then we'll attach those 18 millimeter bolts that we took off earlier. All right, so now with the top kind of loosely tightened in, we've got the studs through the bottom and we're gonna go ahead and take those 18 millimeter nuts and tighten them up. Now, as you go to tighten both the top and the bottom down, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and check the manufacturer specs on what torque you need to set that to. So you can hit it with a ratchet first, that's what we're gonna do, and then we'll come back with the torque wrench and get it to BDS's specs for this system. But once again, check your instructions just to be sure you do the right numbers for your kit. So now that we've torqued everything down the way it needs to be with the strut, we're gonna go ahead and move the knuckle back up into place. And for this part, you're gonna probably need an extra set of hands to bring this upper control arm down. So we want the stud to come back through the knuckle and then we can tighten on that little nut to hold everything together. So once you get to a certain point of tightening this nut up, you'll realize that it's starting to actually spin the stud with the joint as well, and it won't go any further. So what you'll need to do then is get this 18 millimeter wrench around the nut, and then you're gonna take a smaller eight millimeter socket, and you can use a wrench for this as well, uh, but we're gonna use the socket there, and just support the stud. So while you twist the nut, it actually tightens everything up without spinning the entire joint. Next, before we go ahead and attach our tie rod back to the knuckle, we're gonna go ahead and reattach the sway bar back here. And we're just doing that beforehand, so if we need a little bit of play or we need to wiggle the sway bar slightly, we still can. But let's go ahead and tighten this back up.
Now let's carefully unwrap our sensor wire here so it's not caught up in the tie rod itself. And then we're gonna bring the tie rod back around underneath the knuckle. Now, same as with this upper control arm, you'll notice that you'll only be able to tighten this to a certain point before it starts spinning the stud. So now you'll need a little seven millimeter socket or a wrench to grab the end, and then a 15 millimeter wrench to go ahead and tighten the actual nut itself down. With the tie rod all tightened into place now, we can go ahead and attach the brake line bracket and the bracket for the wiring here on the sides of the knuckle. We'll tighten those down, and then we can also reattach these plastic clips at the top. But you will notice that sometimes these clips do break when you pull them out, and they don't fit extremely tightly once you try to push them back in. So you can also use zip ties to get that tightened back on there. That way it's not flopping around or getting caught in your suspension. So with that, this is gonna wrap up the front spacer section of the install for our BDS kit, but we do still have those rear shocks to put on. So we'll go ahead, throw our front wheel back on here and then move around to the rear end of the truck and we can get that shock popped in real quick. So to replace the rear shock, it's actually a really simple process. You basically just have a lower mount with this 15 millimeter bolt on it, as well as an upper mount. And this also has a 15 millimeter bolt on it. And you'll basically just be able to take a ratchet, loosen these up, pull it out, we'll swap the new shock in, tighten it up with the same hardware, and then we're all good to go. Now make sure when you're positioning the rear that you leave that top mount a little bit loose so you can still swing the shock into place. And you'll probably need to put a bit of pressure on it or use a pry bar to get it lined up with the hole here. And then once you've done, you're done and you've got the stud through, then you can go back and retighten everything for good. So guys, that's gonna be a wrap on this BDS leveling kit install. Now, with any other leveling kit or any sort of front suspension work, as always, you definitely need to take your vehicle, go have it professionally aligned, so that way everything's dialed in and you're not wearing your tires funny or putting yourself at risk safety-wise. So we're gonna get our truck totally straightened out, but we do have it back on the ground, it looks great. You can see we've got quite a bit more wheel clearance in here now to fit a little bit bigger tire, and the nose is nice and level with the back, so we don't have any of that weird factory rake. And we're pretty happy with the results. 
So if you guys are interested in picking up one of these BDS kits for your Ranger, you can head down the description below, click that link, it'll shoot you over to our website. And also while you're down there, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of the other installs and reviews that we'll be cranking out. And as always, I will see you guys next time.